from the headquarters of Telesur English in Quito, Ecuador. I'm Carla Gonzalez and this is From the South. We start in Botswana, where the country's high court has ruled in favor of decriminalizing homosexuality in an armed decision for equal rights. The court rejected laws that imposed up to seven years in prison for same-sex relationships, saying they were unconstitutional. The case was brought to court by a student who argued that society had changed and that homosexuality was widely accepted today. Botswana follows other African nations like Angola, Mozambique and the Seychelles that have all scrapped anti-homosexuality laws in recent years. <laughs> Venezuelan grassroots organizations are at the forefront of protecting the social gains of the Bolivarian Revolution. These groups, also known as colectivos, are often misrepresented in media as they support Venezuela's sovereignty and their fight against imperialism. Let's take a look at what the work they do in communities all across the nation. In the neighborhood known as January 23rd, a security post introduces everyone to La Piedrita, the colectivo in charge of this place. Among the projects they manage are a bakery, a cafeteria, street cleaning operations, and growing various crops while also maintaining control in one of the most emblematic neighborhoods of Caracas. This was a dump and little by little we recovered it. Little by little we build what you see here now. Our community has land used to grow vegetables for the people. The January 23rd neighborhood has a history of social organization dating back to the 60s. Another 10 collectivos can be found here, developing multiple projects, both for self-defense and for political growth. Colectivos existed long before Commander Chavez. They are social work groups that became larger collectives after Chavez rose to power. The determination and commitment of colectivos to the Bolivarian Revolution often creates fear among the opposition and corporate media, who frequently call them criminals. In April 2019, the National Assembly presented a bill that qualifies them as terrorist groups. The paramilitary collectives are criminals who will sooner rather than later pay for the crimes they are committing against Venezuelans, both inside and outside the country. But collectivos strongly reject these accusations. Some are linked to political parties, while others remain autonomous. But they all provide support for many neighborhoods. What hurts them is that you can see plainly that there's no kind of criminal element. We promote peace in many neighborhoods of Venezuela. The revolutionary collectivos support the social policies of the revolutionary government inside communities. What we want is to live in peace so that our communities live well and that there's easy access to goods, services and medicines. In May 2019, La Piedrita hosted a meeting of 100 colectivos from different states where they confirmed their support for the Bolivarian Revolution while also asking for a greater role for social organizations. Strengthening people power is fundamental. We want to promote self-management so that people can resist and fight against U.S. imperialism. There are hundreds of colectivos all over Venezuela, working closely with other grassroots organizations for Venezuela's defense and development. A group of protesters in Portugal gather in front of Novo Banco's headquarters in Lisbon, demanding that the bank unfreeze Venezuela's funds. Currently, the bank has blocked over $1 billion belonging to the South American country. News of the protest was announced by Venezuela's foreign minister, Jorge Arriaza, via Twitter, as he highlighted the importance of the demonstration. Argentinian President Mauricio Macri has welcomed his Colombian counterpart Ivan Duque to Buenos Aires. Both presidents had a meeting at the Casa Rosada with their cabinet members. Among the topics that they discuss are is, that they are expected to discuss is the political situation in Venezuela. They have also been promoting the newly created right-wing regional bloc ProSur and talk about ways of bringing Mercosur and the Pacific Alliance closer. 
Authorities in Mexico have continued to crack down on Central American asylum seekers passing through the country on their way to the United States. On Monday, dozens of migrants were detained by immigration authorities in Chiapas after they crossed the Suchiate River. These arrests followed the deployment of thousands of security forces by the government after a deal was signed with the U.S. government. Migrant rights activists have condemned the deal, saying it endangers the lives of migrants trying to escape the violence in their countries. Tapachula is a prison city. Tapachula is a city where migrants can't leave, even if they wanted to. And this idea of militarization of opening quarters for soldiers, it would make it impossible for them to move. It's basically condemning people who want to escape violence and seek safety. They will be stuck. An investigative journalist in Brazil has uncovered alleged collusion between a former judge and a prosecutor which led to the imprisonment of former president Lula da Silva. Glenn Greenwald from The Intercept leaked documents and messages exchanged between prosecutor Delton Dalagnol and former judge Sergio Moro, planning to block Lula from contesting the 2018 elections. For over two years, Moro provided advice to prosecutors, including advanced information on his rulings in order to undermine Lula's defense. Moro was one of the head judges in the Lava Jato investigation and the one who sentenced Lula to over nine years in prison despite a lack of conclusive evidence. The lead prosecutor in the investigation had also expressed concern about the lack of hard evidence against Lula. Meanwhile, a group of protesters have taken to the streets of Brasilia calling for the release of the former president after the leaked documents were revealed on how the Brazilian anti-corruption investigators conspired to keep him out of the presidential race. The Lava Jato investigation led by the then judge Sergio Moro has a long and complicated story. It goes back to 2014 when the scheme to pay off politicians using a car wash to launder the money first came to light. Here are some of those key moments. First, in March 2014, the money laundering network known as Lava Jato was first revealed to the public. A year later, in March 2015, the Supreme Court published a first list of 49 people involved in the corruption scheme. And in March 2016, former President Lula was accused of holding hidden assets. In September that year, Moro and his team accused Lula of being the head of the corruption network. Also in April 2017, the Supreme Court expanded the investigation to include 98 more businessmen and politicians, including eight members of President Michel Temer's cabinet back then. Two months later, the newspaper O Globo revealed a secret recording in which President Temer approved an illegal payment, seemed to be approving it. The Attorney General Rodrigo Janot requested corruption charges against the president. Josh Moro was still working on his case against Lula, and in July, the Workers' Party leader was sentenced to nine and a half years. But Lula was able to appeal in freedom. A second court ruling in January 2018 increased his sentence to 12 years and one month. Finally, on April 5, 2018, Judge Moro issued an arrest warrant, and Lula was taken into detention, where he has been ever since. Coming up, Bolivia wants to be our world leader in producing lithium, so don't go away. From here to beyond the south, from here to the Caribbean or further north, where can I see news connecting the whole south? From Washington, from Mexico, from Caracas, from Quito, from Havana. You can always see the news from a new vision, connecting the global south. Only on Discover the cultural diversity that defines a continent.
place where art and tradition are part of the same nucleus. Artistic explorations. Values. Fridays, only on this world. Welcome back. The UN mission in Mali has confirmed that at least 95 people have been killed in an attack in the central region in a village inhabited by members of the Dogon ethnic group. The attackers also killed animals and burned down houses. The government said uh, that adding to an investigation that was already underway. Reports state that the attackers came from the Fulani tribe. Tensions between the groups have been rising since an ethnic Dogon militia was accused of carrying out a massacre in an ethnic Fulani village in March. The UN mission in Mali today said that a deadly attack that took place uh, a deadly attack took place yesterday evening in the village of Sobanuku in the Mopti region. According to preliminary information, armed men bro uh, led an attack that left at least 95 people dead and many others wounded. The mission is coordinating its response in support of Malian authorities, and the United Nations system in Mali is mobilizing to provide humanitarian assistance to help people affected. The mission also provided air support this morning in support of the Malian government to prevent future uh, further attacks. And Mali's president, Ibrahim Boubacar Keita, has condemned the massacre. Speaking to journalists in Switzerland, Keita appealed to Ma Malians to come and work together and not be led by a cycle of revenge and vendetta. He added that he will cut short his official trip to Switzerland so that he can return home and address the security situation. I have decided to cut short my visit and return to Bamako, to Mali, as my duty demands it, to be close to our people when there's in a pain. And this pain is strong. It's cruel after all the sorrow we have lived through recently. We thought the cycle was closing, or at least reducing if not closing. Unfortunately, it started up again. The United Nations Security Council has extended by one year the arms embargo placed on Libya. The Council's decision comes as the standoff between forces loyal to the internationally recognized government and General Khalifa Haftar's so-called Libyan National Army continues. UN, Security, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said weak implementation of the arms embargo has helped fuel the conflict between the two warring factions. The embargo that was first imposed in 2011 makes it illegal for any country to sell arms to Libya. However, the embargo has been frequently violated. The National Union of Metal Workers of South Africa and the South African Cabin Crew Association have protested outside the country's four major airports. According to a statement released by the two organizations, the protests have been, have been necess necessary to demand the resignation of the chief executive officer of South African Airways, Bujani Jarana. The unions claim Jarana was forced to resign by government officials who they accused of plotting to privatize the airline. They say privatization of the airline will result in job losses. Sudan's ruling military council have released a leading member of the People's Liberation Movement to North political party. Yassir Arman, who had just returned to the country after living for years in exile, was detained for five days. He was convicted for his alleged involvement in an uprising that began in 2011 in the Blue Nile State 
and was sentenced to death in absentia. Another three prominent protest leaders who were arrested over the weekend were also released after they met with the Ethiopian Prime Minister. Meanwhile, the civil disobedience campaign entered its second day with most shops closed as people stay away from work in protest against military rule in Sudan. Much of the city of Khartoum remains shut down to pressure the ruling military council. The strike was 100% successful on its second consecutive day. The first day was 100% successful and 95% on its second day for now. I've been looking for an open pharmacy since this morning, and I haven't found any medication until now. Randa's president has called for African cooperation in dealing with African problems. Speaking during his state visit to Gabon, President Paul Kagame spoke about the need for African countries to work together in solving problems, then to rely on external intervention. He added that countries outside Africa cannot solve the continent's challenges, but rather add more problems. Kagame arrived in Libreville on Monday. From outside of the continent, if they are not careful about how they help, they end up complicating the problems even further. So the best way is to work with African institutions, like the African Union and other institutions, and work with regional countries uh, where the problems are, and then support their ideas, their initiatives as to how to deal with the matter. Barbadian Prime Minister Mia Motley has assured citizens that the island's economy is on demand as she called on Barbados' diaspora to contribute to national development. Motley was speaking at the recent town hall meeting in the UK hosted by the island's High Commission in London. We're going to build the commitment of people to go beyond the call of duty to build out our nation to be great. I don't want to sound like the man who visited this town earlier this week, <laughs> but, <laughs> but we have, we have, if we are being honest, work to do, and we have to do the heavy lifting to make sure that Barbados can stand tall and stand for what it stood for in the past, but even build upon that to transform a nation and to transform a people. And in a lighter moment, PM Motley was beaming with national pride when she recalled a recent FIFA Women's World Cup encounter. Last night in Paris, we have not yet fielded a women's football team that has qualified to the women's FIFA Women's Finals, but we will, and we're working on it. As soon as intermission came, as I sat there behind President Macron and them, the first song, the very, very first song to be played in that stadium of 45,000 people that was on fire and magnified by obviously three French goals was Rihanna's song. And the stadium went wild. So that we got there anyhow. <laughs> Malcolm X said, by any means necessary. We have that Bolivia story for other newscasts, but we do have millions that were affected by floods in China and the protests that continue in Sudan. Stay with us. Enjoy the best content in spaces or where you will discover new perspectives, innovation, well-being, conservation, equity, traditions, 
a wide variety of contents that you will find on Telesur, the news source of Latin America and the Caribbean. Who's moving the chess? What interests motivate the actors behind each event? Se despliega el tablero. On critical moves. Investigates every event from Monday to Friday. Only on the resort. Thank you for joining us again. The president of Greece has dissolved parliament after accepting Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras' call for a snap election. Tsipras called for the election after the main opposition, New Democra Democracy Party, defeated his leftist Syriza party by 9.5 points in the European parliamentary elections last month. The government wants to hold a new election on July 7th. The Prime Minister said with the early election he hopes to preserve the economic progress made in recent years as it remains fragile after borrowing more than 280 billion euros in three separate bailouts. The Iranian and German foreign ministers held a joint news conference expressing their support for the nuclear deal signed by the permanent members of the United Nations Security Council and Germany with Iran in 2015. Speaking in Tehran, the top Iranian diplomat Mohammad Yavad Sarif and his German counterpart Heiko Maas said the P5 plus 1 agreement with Iran brought peace in the Middle East closer. The United States inflamed tensions in the region by unilaterally withdrawing from the nuclear deal in 2018, imposing new sanctions on Tehran and sending an aircraft carrier to the Gulf. However, Iran says it has remained faithful to the terms of the nuclear deal despite the United States' exit and subsequent economic attacks on the Islamic Republic. The new tension in our region is the result of the economic war the United States declared against Iran. Mr. Trump said himself that we are in an economic war with Iran. The only way to decrease tensions in the region is to stop the economic war. And China is breaking records as it increases its gold reserves and diversifies away from the U.S dollar assets. China is investing heavily in gold as the White House continues to pursue its trade war. It has added more than 58 tons of the metal to its reserves over the past six months. The country has the six largest gold reserves in the world, having focused on foreign exchange reserves in the past, of which it has 3.1 trillion U.S. dollars worth. Central bank gold purchases have increased globally by 68 percent in the first quarter of 2019, in comparison with the same time period last year. Turkey is looking at purchasing fighter jets from Russia and China after the U.S. threatened to prevent the delivery of its F-35 aircrafts. According to local media, Ankara has plans B, C and D in the event that it has to purchase fighter jets from another source. The U.S. has said it will not deliver the F-35 if Turkey's deal to purchase the Russian-built S-400 air defense system goes ahead. Turkey and Russia signed a $2.5 billion contract for the model in 2017. Protests erupted in Pakistan against the arrest of former President Asif Ali Sardan. Thousands took to the streets of the capital, Islamabad, on Monday to demonstrate against the arrest of Sardan, who was detained on Monday on money laundering charges. His supporters say the arrest is unjust and politically motivated. One person has been confirmed dead after a helicopter crash in New York City. 
The helicopter crash landed onto the roof of a 54-story building in Midtown Manhattan and caught fire. It, this killed the pilot inside the plane. The building, known as the, a, the AXA Equitable Center, houses the U.S. headquarters of the subsidiary of the French-based insurance and banking company. We now bring you more stories from around the world. Four more bodies have been recovered from a wreck of a tourist boat that sank on the Dubini River in Budapest last month. The boat was carrying South Korean tourists when it crashed with a cruise ship and capsized, leaving 20 people dead and eight others missing. Recovery efforts by the Hungarian and South Korean teams have been hampered by high levels in the Dunumi. It is the first time uh, after the tragic uh, event I've seen in the TV and read in the newspapers and uh, I was also uh, on such kind of uh, ships, tourist ships and uh, it is uh, very upset to uh, think that uh, could happen also with us such uh, tragic events. In China, more than one million people have been affected by floods in Jiangxin province. Heavy rainstorms and floods hit regions in eastern and southern China over the weekend, killing six people and destroying more than a hundred houses. Sudan's health ministry says the barricades being placed on roads by protesters have affected hospitals. According to officials, hospitals cannot be easily assessed as there have been cases where emergency cases have been delayed. As civil disobedience demonstrations continue against the military council, demonstrators have vowed to continue pressuring them to step aside and let a civilian-led government take power. At this time, the hospital is working under emergency. Many employees have reported the challenge that they are facing to get to work because most of the roads have been blocked by protesters. We are appealing to those who block these roads to open them for those in need of healthcare, since many people lost their lives because they cannot reach the hospital. And with that, we end our news brief, where you can find these and more stories by checking our website, telesurenglish.net. And be sure to also join us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For Telesur English, I'm Carla Gonzalez. Thank you for watching.